Howdy. Welcome back to the Rhinestone Roper Show. You know, we've been doing some gun spinning. Today we're going to talk about how to protect your guns and how to protect your audience and yourself. But first, take a moment to subscribe and leave a comment. Some of your comments have uh, led me to do this little talk here, and, uh, and I appreciate them. So let's talk safety for a moment. In one of your comments, you ask, where should I spin my guns? Where it's best? Is, is over my bed a good place? Well, and that's the problem. We're trying to spin our guns someplace where we can afford to drop them and not break our grips. And that's the part of your gun that'll break. And if you're worried about dropping your guns because you're on a place that's not safe, then you're going to drop your guns. If you're in a place where you're not worried about it, you're a lot more apt to be able to concentrate on your trick. So let's talk about indoors. Indoors, you might spin your guns over, over your bed. If you're practicing small tricks over your bed, just a basic spin, that might be a good place to practice. Over your bed is not a good place to practice tosses, shoulder rolls, really any toss, because that gun is going to come around and you miss it, it'll hit your mattress and then bounce back up. It'll bounce into your kneecap, it'll start bouncing a roll against, put a hole in your wall or in your headboard. So you don't want, probably don't want to do it over your bed. Uh, you might put a blanket down over the floor, but still, that's not much padding. You know, you hit like this, like this, and the concussion is going to go straight down to the wood. So the, the house is not a really good place to practice. Um, outside is a, is a much better opportunity. Like right here, I'm standing on dirt underneath these pine trees. Years of pine needles have fallen. It's an excellent place to drop your guns. Out in the yard, if you've watered it recently so it's kind of soft, then that's an excellent place. The only thing is you end up uh, picking mud out of, out of your barrel, but that doesn't hurt your gun. If, if you haven't watered your lawn, so if it's hard packed or if it's frozen, then that makes it not a very good place. Out next to the haystack is a good spot. You know, a good bed of uh, alfalfa leaves and, and stems makes a great place. You can't hurt your gun out there. So, look for a good spot to practice. When I'm doing shows, the guns come out, I just start my routine. I don't spend any time talking about my guns. What that means is if, if I had replica guns that were not firing, I guess I wouldn't have to talk about that either. Just do the tricks. Most people are going to assume they're just what they look like. One of the reasons I don't spend a lot of time talking about my guns, I don't want to identify how much they're worth. I don't want to create a desire in certain members of the audience to come steal my guns. So I don't talk about it. I just, I just do it. Sometimes if you do a great job of spinning your guns, they look like they don't weigh anything. And people will come up and they'll say, hey, I want to, can I see your guns? Are those real guns? And it's only the ones who doubt that they are come up and ask. And I say, yes, you are. Can I see them? And I always say, yeah. I pull my gun out and let them see them. And then and they say, you want to hold it? If it's a kid, I ask permission of the parent, put it in their hand, and they go like this. And then they're amazed at how heavy they are, given the fact of how light I made them look. But I don't have a problem with letting people touch these guns because I never put anything in these guns. These are completely operational. They've had action jobs. They're very good, very good guns, but I never shoot them. I don't even put blanks in them. Why? Because I use these guns to spin in front of an audience. Those barrels are going, going towards the audience. <laughs> you know, people will surround you during a the show. They're going to be all over the place. When you're in front of an audience, maybe you're late, uh, maybe there are distractions. You know, anything could happen. Anything could put you out of your usual routine. You get to spin in these guns and accidentally catch that hammer. I like knowing there's nothing in that gun, and there never has been anything in this set of guns. If I were to spin guns with a blank in them, you know, you might you might have to do that. You know, you might be a ways away from your audience, and you might be wanting to shoot shoot something right away in your show, so you put blanks in them. Well, make sure you're away from your audience when you do that. That's another thing that's good with these Rugers. There's a transfer bar in there that won't let this gun fire when this hammer comes down unless your finger has depressed the trigger. So this action will not fire this Ruger and that's good. 
You know, we're Wild West entertainers. We do things that other people think are totally crazy. So when I'm considering doing something in my show, I think, what's the worst that could happen? And if that happens, how do I explain it? You know, how do I explain it in court if I hurt someone? And I ask, how can I explain it to myself so I can continue doing the show and not feel guilty about it? You know, most of the things we do seem totally crazy to other people. Entertainers know it's only a little bit crazy. But if, if I spun these guns with, with something in them and it goes off, puts uh, grains of black powder in somebody's face or or shoot somebody that's unexplainable and that's why I never load these guns with real bullets ever I don't want to have to worry about that because I'm I try to be on top of things all the time but sometimes I'm not sometimes I've driven all night to get to where I'm going sometimes I'm late sometimes I'm just on time for the show I got to take right off and do it and and I trust them I'm at my guns are not loaded. I can do that because they're never loaded. This set. So there's just a few tips. So take a second, subscribe, leave a comment. And, uh, and you might want to take a look at one of these other videos. Hey, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time.